So, there's been two new reports of a potential Switch Pro model this week, with the story suggesting that an upgraded Switch could be on the cards for next year. This isn't the first time we've heard of rumours of a Switch Pro though, so what exactly do we know about this potential revision, and when can we actually expect it? Greetings everyone, Phil here from Nintendo Village. I've gone back through all of the reports and rumours dating back to like 2018, I've looked at statements from Nintendo and a bunch of other technical things and statements from partners and things like that, and we're getting a Switch Pro. I'm going to explain why I think so in this video. Thank you very much for tuning in, I hope you enjoy it. If you get to the end and you did, I hope you'll consider subscribing to help us continue to grow. And a big welcome back to all our subscribers, we hit a thousand subs this week and I'm honestly so thankful for all your support, for continuing to watch our videos and to help the channel grow, so thank you so much. Without further ado, let's get into it. So yes, the rumour mill shifted into Top Gear after a report out of Taiwan suggested that Nintendo were planning on launching a new Switch model at the beginning of next year. The Economic Daily News in Taipei cited sources involved with the manufacturing of components for the system, suggesting it would feature upgraded interactivity and an improved display. This was then corroborated in a report from Bloomberg, citing their own sources familiar with the matter and claiming that Nintendo have looked at 4K support and increased power. It actually feels like we've been discussing the possibility of a Switch Pro pretty much since the Switch launched. The origins of these rumours can be traced back to a Wall Street Journal article in October of 2018, a mere 18 months after the Switch was released. Let's go through the timeline. Citing suppliers and people with knowledge of the plan, the outlet suggested a revised version of the console was going to arrive the following year in 2019. That story said that Nintendo was still figuring out what hardware and software features were going to be included, and although it kind of hinted at the idea of an upgrade, it only really talked about a revised version. Remember that, because we'll come back to it in a moment. Jump forward a couple of months to December 2018, and then Nintendo of America President Reggie fils was asked straight up about the possibility of a Switch Pro and basically shot it down. He said the focus was on the OG Switch. Interestingly though, he did say that the tactic of revising the hardware is one that's deployed later in the life cycle. Also remember that. In March 2019, the Wall Street Journal returned again with another story claiming that Nintendo were releasing not one, but two new Switch models that year. One aimed at core gamers and one aimed at casuals. That casual one seemed to be spot on, with Nintendo revealing the Switch Lite a couple of months later on the 10th of July. And it was indeed missing functions like Rumble, as the Wall Street Journal article had suggested, in order to hit its lower price point. It also fulfilled their prophecy from their October 2018 piece that a revised version of the Switch would arrive the following year. So with half of their March 2 system prediction coming true, this obviously added a whole bunch of fuel to the Switch Pro Fire. But Reggie's replacement, Doug Bowser, reiterated at the time that the focus was still OG Switch and Switch Lite. No Pro. A month later, when the Lite launched, we did get a newer version of the OG Switch. It had a more efficient chip, improving the battery life, some minor improvements to the display, and that was about it. You could be forgiven for thinking that this marginally improved version of the console was what Wall Street Journal had learned about. It arrived at pretty much the same time as the light and offered some improvements, but there was another tidbit in that article which suggests otherwise and seems to be the first real indication of a Switch Pro. In that March report, they also say that Nintendo was switching suppliers for the new models when it came to the screens. The news was that Sharp would be providing the displays. Although they declined to comment at the time, a couple of months later, in August, Sharp Executive Vice President Katsuaki Nomura revealed that the company would be providing its IGZO displays to a video game client. As it turns out, Sharp and Nintendo have a long history, with the company working with Nintendo as far back as the NES. They also provided the processor for the Game Boy, and more recently, the displays for the 3DS. Then, in January this year, a rumour surfaced from a reputable leaker that Nintendo and Nvidia were working on a new custom chip for a new Switch. And as I was sitting down to record this video, news surfaced of a new FCC filing from Nintendo for the Switch, which mentions a brand new chip. Now, it's these two things, the Sharp Exo display and the new custom chip, which seem to suggest that Nintendo are indeed working on a Switch Pro, and this isn't just a slightly tweaked version of the console like we got last year with the improved battery life. Now, this is going to get a little bit technical, and I am far from an expert, but let me try and explain as best as I understand it. The original Switch runs on a graphics chip called the Tegra X1, which itself runs on Nvidia's Maxwell architecture. When the newer Switch came out last year with the improved battery life, Nintendo achieved that by essentially shrinking that Maxwell architecture down onto a smaller chip 
that had previously been used for the Nvidia's Pascal architecture, which was the replacement for Maxwell. This made the chip in the switch much more efficient. Rather than using those efficiency savings to boost processing and graphical power though, Nintendo instead opted to just improve the battery life. Now, back in 2017, Nvidia revealed a new generation of Tega processors called Xavier, and they run on the Volta architecture. The reason that's significant is because that rumoured custom chip that Nintendo and Nvidia are working on is supposed to run on, you guessed it, Volta. The main thing about Volta is its AI machine learning capabilities. Now much of this has been geared towards self-driving cars up till now, but Nvidia have also been honing their DLSS technology, which is basically intelligent upscaling. Digital Foundry ran some hypotheticals based on this and even with a modest upgrade in power, got Wolfenstein Youngblood on hypothetical Switch Pro settings basically on a par with PS4. When Nintendo brought the X1 into the original Switch, they tweaked its original memory from 8GB down to 4GB and kept its power. They essentially pared it down for what they needed the Switch to do, hitting certain battery life requirements, ensuring overheating wasn't an issue and so on. It may well be the case that they're doing the same thing with the Volta Xavier chip. They could remove certain features and even half the standard memory in order to get it into the Switch Pro. Doing that would still put the Switch at PS4 levels of power, but even if they halved it again, it would still have double the memory of the original Switch. Even more than that, they could stick at 4GB, but with the Volta architecture's improved bandwidth, they could increase the speed of the processor and graphics. Doing this would allow for a much more stable frame rate and resolution in Switch games. Depending on how much memory they go for, it could allow for 1080p in handheld mode, especially if this custom chip makes use of Nvidia's intelligent upscaling technology. The drawbacks to this would be the increased power consumption and the effect that would have on battery life, but this is where the sharp IGZO displays come in. Because of the way they're made, IGZO displays are capable of higher resolutions, higher refresh rates and deeper colours, but most importantly, are incredibly efficient when it comes to power, requiring nearly 90% less than a traditional display. The custom graphics chip Nintendo are reportedly working on with Nvidia, if it is indeed based on the Volta architecture, would make the most of those IGZO displays as they'd be capable of pushing higher resolutions, and the reduced power consumption of the IGZO display would allow Nintendo to run a beefier chip without sacrificing that all-important battery life. The report from January that revealed this Volta-based processor rumour said that the production of those processors had yet to begin, and so it would be unlikely that we'd see this new Switch this year. This ties in with Nintendo President Shintaro Furukawa's comments in an investor's briefing in January that Nintendo had no plans to release a new Switch model in 2020, and it would also tally with the latest reports that this Switch Pro is due to arrive in 2021. That would be four years since the launch of the original Switch. Funnily enough, the new 3DS, which also offered power improvements and a better display than its predecessor, launched four years after the original. So the timings also fit with Reggie's comment we discussed earlier that hardware revisions happen later in a console's life cycle. The 3DS got another solid two years with the new line. Assuming the Switch managed the same with a Pro model, that would give the system a six year life cycle, tying in perfectly with Furukawa's comments around the Switch's third birthday that the system was halfway through its life cycle. Plus, unlike the new 3DS, which had about a dozen exclusive games, a Switch Pro wouldn't necessarily have to lock games to it. Many Switch games, including Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Doom, Skyrim, and a whole lot more, make use of dynamic scaling. This means they can increase the visual quality when there's more power available. This would mean Pro owners would get the bonus of improved visuals and in performance, but light or original Switch owners would still be able to play. Nvidia's intelligent upscaling technology would help this too. Lastly, to give more credence to the idea of a third Switch model, the console's version 10 firmware update included reference to one. Data miner Mike Heskin discovered preliminary support for a new hardware model named NXABCD within the code. NX, of course, being the development code name for the Switch. So, to sum up, it seems that those earlier reports were actually only pointing towards the Switch Lite. However, subsequent rumours and information do seem to indicate that a Switch Pro is on the way. Here's what we know. We know Sharp are providing Nintendo with displays, and we know that those displays aren't showing up in current Switch Lite or revised Switch models. We also know that in order to make the most of those displays, the Switch would need a beefier chipset, and we know that Nintendo have filed with the FCC for such a revised chipset in the Switch. With me so far? We also know that there is reference to a third Switch model within the Switch's firmware itself, 
and we know that the timings kind of fit with the way Nintendo think about the Switch lifecycle and that the kind of time periods that they would bring in hardware revisions. Got all that? I've got to admit, when these latest stories first came out, I was still incredibly sceptical and I didn't really think Nintendo would bother with the Switch Pro with the console still selling as well as it is. But having done all this research and looked into all this, I'm convinced. I think we're getting a Switch Pro next year. Famous last words, eh? What do you think about the possibility of a Switch Pro? Let me know down in the comments. I'll leave links to all of my sources for this video in the description so you can go and have a look for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of work to pull together, but it was also a lot of fun to do. If you did enjoy it, do hit that like button and I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with our weekly uploads and help us continue to make these videos. Don't forget to check out thenintendovillage.com for more Nintendo news, reviews, features, podcasts and all that cool stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I shall catch you all next time.